everybody, and welcome to the show. The Atheist Experience is live January 26th, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, Ashley Perry, and my co-host as always. Afternoon. And today on the show, we have back Arlo Pignotti. Welcome. Hi. Thanks very much. Always hey. happy to have Arlo. And yes, he has brought his holy paraphernalia stuff. Don't worry. This is going to be... <clears throat> we had to figure out some way to counter-program for the Super Bowl. So uh, you, Yeah, you, so me and my wife went on a shopping spree yeah. yesterday. <clears throat> so uh, we, oh. we've uh, definitely got a whole lot of rowdiness on the program today. Uh, this show is sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels. Located downtown at 307 West 5th Street, between Guadalupe and Lavaca, except for the first Sunday of each month, when we have our lecture series at noon, downtown at the Austin History Center, located at 9th and Guadalupe. Our next lecture will be next Sunday, February the 2nd, and this man will be giving his big holy paraphernalia presentation, for which today's show will be something of a teaser. So, um... Again, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, just uh, quick other ACA announcements. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Godless Gamers uh, meets Monday night at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser about 7 o'clock. And ACA Happy Hour meets Thursday evenings uh, about 7.30ish, 8 at Antonio's Tex-Mex, uh, located near the intersection of I-35 and Highway 183. <clears throat> People tend to trickle in all evening uh, for that, so if you get there at 7.30 and no one's around, don't, don't worry. I just look for the big rowdy table of atheists. Um, the uh, let's see, da, 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 what else? Oh yes, the nonprofits, which is our uh, internet radio show, uh, hosted by Jeff D, is on temporary hiatus. Uh, however, you can hear past episodes at our website on the radio show page. So uh, if you have missed any episodes, uh, you can go there, download them, check them out, listen to them, and uh, I'm sure there must be some way to email either uh, Jeff D or Russell Glasser, the radio show's producer, to harass them about getting back on the air as soon as possible. It was a great show, a lot of fun. They did it for a solid year. I think they're just kind of, kind of taking a breather, but, so let's all convince them not to take a permanent breather. Um, righty. Okay, University Atheists and Agnostics, which is a UT student organization founded by Charles Tabany. Uh, which has starting up its second semester, has uh, meetings every Friday in Rainy Hall, room 3.102A in Rainy Hall. That's Fridays at 4 p.m. University Atheists and Agnostics, very successful group. Uh, the email address right there on your screen to get more information is uia at mail.utexas.edu if you are a student or faculty member of the University of Texas. This is the first uh, successful um, <clears throat> full-fledged uh, group, uh, student organization for unbelievers uh, that I've known of. So uh, congratulations again, once again to Charles on that. And Fridays, 4 p.m., <clears throat> Rainy Hall, 3.102a. All right, then. I believe that that is it for announcements. If you'd like to find out more about the ACA, of course, you can always visit our lovely website at atheist-community.org. And um, <clears throat> visit our fact page, too. We have a very informative fact page on the website. These are frequently asked questions that we very commonly get on the television show from callers uh, like yourselves. Uh, so if, you have, if this is the first time that you've ever caught us on the air and you're like, <gasps> what's an atheist show doing on TV? Well, we get a lot of very common questions, and um, maybe we've already answered your question. Check our fact page first, and if not, this is a live call-in show. We take uh, calls from just anybody who wants to uh, ask us stuff. We talk to believers and unbelievers alike, and it's all kinds of fun. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us today. If you are one of maybe the uh, very few people in Austin who, uh, who doesn't care about the Super Bowl, um, uh, then join the few of the proud, the rest of us who don't care about it that much either, <laughs> and uh, call us up. So, let me see. So that's it. We're on the air. We're live. And it is now time for the news. Ashley, what is happening in the world? Okay. Uh, i got a couple quick stories here. Um, first one. Jerry Thacker is, uh, was chosen by a presidential advisory, was to serve on the Presidential Advisory Commission on HIV and AIDS. Uh, they would do research on drugs and treatment and stuff like that <coughs> mm-hmm. um, and decide what the best course of action is and what should be promoted and stuff like that. Um, he is a graduate of Bob Jones University. Oh, boy. Uh, and a founder of the Scepter Institute. And at one point, his his biography in the Scepter website referred to AIDS as the gay plague. 
Um, they have since revised this. It's now called The Plague. Ah, uh, I see. So uh-huh. He has changed his views. Uh, Thacker has referred... No, he hasn't changed his views. He's changed his, <laughs> He's changed website, his website. Yeah, because the me because apparently there are now the media called attention to yeah. it, and it's embarrassing. Yep. Yeah. Thacker has referred to gay people as practicing a death style rather than a lifestyle, and has described homosexual homosexuality as a sin that can be cured by Christianity. <laughs> And he has been appointed he by been George appointed Bush. By the president of this country yeah. to serve on a commission that studies AIDS and HIV. And this is only too typical, right? I mean, the Bush administration is becoming more and more blatant yeah. and more and more shameless, right, about hiring ideologues, these mm. far right wing religious ideologues, to positions that should ha- should be about science. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he's he's done it now repeatedly. The problem is when you have these scientific panels making decisions based upon ideology and not science, yeah. you're going to get bad decisions being made. Yeah. And, um, and, of course, the complete bunk sorry. in all of this. Yeah. We, it, it's fairly obvious what his views were. So he's on, so he's on this advisory panel now. Well, we're coming to that. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> he has published his views on a website. Mm-hmm. It's fairly obvious where he stands on some of these things. Yeah. And now that all of that has come to light... The president and the people have come back and said the views that he holds are far, far removed from what the president believes. <laughs> the president has a total opposite view. The president's view is people with AIDS need to be treated with care and compassion. Why did he promote yeah. this guy and assign him to a committee to study HIV and AIDS if his views are so far out of whack with what the president believes? Because the, because the statement issued by the White House is a flat lie. It's complete That's, bunk. Yeah. I of mean, course. it's again, this is. This is a, a, just the, the same case of trying oh, to backpedal out of it. Oh, now the, the the media has called attention to this embarrassing uh, ideology that we have and this exactly. intolerance, and uh, we need to we need to cover our butts yeah. very quickly. So, yeah. it's just like when uh, Bob Jones University, speaking of a few yeah. years ago, they had forever this uh, policy banning interracial dating. Yep. Yeah. Until, of course, the media got hold of it, and it became incredibly embarrassing. And then yeah. they got rid of the policy. Like, yeah. oh, well, we're not really racist of course. scum. But uh, <laughs> we only... We just play it on TV. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't mean to be, like, racist by saying that, you know, black people and white people can't yeah. intermingle or, yeah. you know, so, get together. Just Well, the, oh, the shining light here is that since all of this has come out, mm-hmm. since it's now in the news that he is some kind of homophobe or whatever... Uh, <laughs> He has stepped down. He has. He was not actually on the commission. Mm-hmm. He, oh. was, he was. Oh, going he's to be assigned to, ah. He was nominated. He was uh-huh. going to be signed up on Thursday or whatever. Mm. And uh, he has since stepped down. He won't be taking the position. Yeah. So yay. Yeah. But uh, this but we just... kind of wonder who's going to take his place. Because now they're going to have to find somebody else <sighs> to take his place. Hopefully, after this brouhaha, they'll yeah. they'll pick somebody who actually you know, knows what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, they'll they'll uh, they'll be a little bit more circumspect about picking somebody who's a flagrant ideologue who has. Exactly. Published, uh, you know, homophobic, anti-gay hate statements exactly. on the web. I mean, yeah, it's like <laughs> kind of a giveaway. Uh, yeah. As we can see, these fundamentalists and their groups and their universities will only be as evil as we'll let them get away with. Because yeah. we see they change yeah. here and there as people raise their voices. And we exactly. Just can't, so we can't just. So I got to keep the light on them. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, we need to keep this in view. And you know, this is uh, yell the, about it. When the Bush back. administration yeah. has has been uh, engaging in this kind of pattern of of ideological, you know, ha- has had this sort of ideological thrust on the world stage, uh, with the result of great embarrassment. I mean, yeah. somebody recently posted there's an article in the Nation website that someone on our mailing list posted uh, to to the list that I read through, and it's incredible how um, you get Bush, the Bush administration sends delegations. Okay. You know, off to Europe and Africa and wherever they have these huge worldwide conferences okay. on health and on HIV spread and on women's, you know, health concerns and what have you. And the Bush delegations apparently act like complete boors, right? I mean, they're just they're they're, they're just they go in there strutting like complete bully boys, and they are the sole voice in these whole conferences. Where you know, anytime they're like, oh wait, we can't add the phrase you know, reproductive. Uh, yeah. in, uh, 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 services to this, um, yeah. you know, to this uh, provision. That's evil or something. You know, they and and everyone else, every every other, every representative of yeah. every other civilized country is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you, we have yeah. this 
we have this horrible worldwide, uh, we have this horrible AIDS epidemic in sub-Saharan Africa, and, 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 and the USA... We can't be distributing condoms. Yeah, they, they just have to abstain from sex. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, again, you have, they want a policy rooted in ideology and not in facts, not in yeah. science, not in actual stuff that go, goes Reality. on in the world. Yeah. Reality. So it's just yeah. crazy. And this is... Um, you know, I mean, the Bush administration seems like they're seems like they're out to make the whole world our enemies. You know, it's not just enough yeah. that radical Muslims in the Middle East hate us. You know, <laughs> Bush wants everyone else to hate us too. It's like he wants to get everybody, every country in the world except Israel, not to be our ally. Yeah. Or something. It's just yeah. nuts. Yeah. So well, for those end times. Well, 1994 is so only much like being the underdogs. So, and everybody else is against them. Yes, look, we are the persecuted minority. Mm -hmm. Please help us. Wait, did you right. say 1994? Nineteen uh, two thousand. Uh, yeah, boy. Is there a sequel? Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a time warp. Um, yeah, two thousand four. Uh, the elections are only a year and a half away. Oh, I thought yeah. about nineteen eighty four. Nineteen eighty four. Reference to that date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuck in between somewhere. Oh well. <laughs> you know. So. Well, we'll see. I mean. <laughs> okay. Anyway, just nuts. Just crazy. Yeah. So this guy has kind of backed away. Yes. And... Yes. Luckily, he's not running anymore. He's not going to be on that. So. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That is hopefully a good thing. And again, and again, they, the, the Christian right wants to claim every time that one of these guys, like, doesn't get appointed to one of these posts. It's like, oh, this is anti-Christian bigotry and persecution, and we're being... Mm. It's like, look, we don't care. <laughs> I don't care what someone believes. Yeah. Okay? I, I, I fully believe in the constitutional right that anybody can believe whatever, you know, crap they want. Yeah. Right? I mean, this is a free country. Yeah. Your mind is your own. You can abuse it as you see fit. <laughs> So <laughs> believe what you like. A person's yeah. creed is their own business. I don't care that this guy is a right-wing Christian. What bothers me is that this is a person who is allowing his, you, his, his personal religious beliefs to interfere with and supersede scientific objectivity yeah. and just plain facts. Yeah. You know, when you allow the ideology to take over and interfere with other people, that's a problem. What, what he believes is not a problem. The yeah. fact that he wants to use this public position and use these beliefs in his public position yeah. to deny people education, deny people services that they need. Yeah. This isn't the only guy. Was it, who was the guy who previously um, was supposed to, uh, what was he, an, uh, um, a part of uh, a women's health uh, position? Something, yes, something who to said do that they should read Bible verses for PMS. Yeah. Oh, this is, that, this yeah. is the guy who refuses, to, who refuses to prescribe birth control to unmarried women. Yeah. And who is who is who Bush chose to head up this uh, this a panel on uh, women's, women's health. health? Yeah, yeah, nuts. Yeah. yeah, and he's a guy who wrote that you know we need Jesus back in the world. And yeah. if you're having headaches and premenstrual cramps, here's here, I wonder read what, Romans chapter two or yeah. something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it yeah. doesn't help. <laughs> I wonder I wonder what all you know the Europeans who uh, were just listening in in you know agog with amazement <laughs> at these world health conferences where the yeah. Bush delegates are making fools of themselves. I wonder what they would have thought about the guy in, what was it, Alabama or someplace, who, the, the state legislator who posted, who, who uh, proposed the legislation requiring women to get death the warrants. death warrant, yes. To get a death warrant from a court before yeah. having an abortion. Yeah. I mean, what kind of, I mean, that is the, this, the lunacy is yeah. going that far. Yeah. I mean, the Bush administration is on this deliberate job. They want to make the, the, the Taliban look like a bunch of tree-hugging liberals. I'm not even <laughs> I mean, sure the rest of those, I mean, some of those kooky yeah. things are even reported to much of the world. But yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. But, but it just the, the fact that something like that could even be mentioned in, in sane... <laughs> I know. Among Funny. people who are supposed to be in somewhat intelligent. Yeah. So. Just nuts. Yeah. If you so, want abortion, you have to go to the judge and get a I mean, death sentence. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. So. I mean, extreme, it's extremist religious ideology yeah. is, is taken over. Yeah. And, or uh, trying to take over, and, but, you know. Yeah. So. You know, it's up well, to the sane people of the world to keep an eye on it. Well, we can continue in the same vein. Uh, oh, we can. Great. Bush is still at it. Uh-huh. Uh, now it's the faith-based initiatives, mm -hmm. um, giving money to churches and stuff so that they can run a soup kitchen or, mm -hmm. or you know, social services for, you know, poor people or marriages, whatever. Yeah. Um, now he wants to actually allow them to have building aid, money to go to the our churches. Money. Tax yes, money. Our tax money. Yeah. To go to churches so that they can improve them and add on to them and yeah. build them. Yeah. Assuming that they have a secular purpose also. So if you can, you know, you can build a church and if, let's say, you know, you have a room in the back 
that you know you you serve out of, as a soup kitchen or something like that. Or just have a gymnasium. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I when I went to uh, um, when I was in Houston, we went to this Baptist church that was like this big community church, and so they had a gym and they had racquetball courts. Yeah. And they had a rec center with pool tables. And, exactly. And, yeah. So they all could you'd take have to federal do is, money and yeah. use it to expand those things. Mm-hmm. The money could the money cannot go specifically towards uh, religious parts of the building, which, again, this is getting into real meddling issues here. Yeah. Right. Um, because typically... How, how do more, they oversee that? Exactly. Well, right. What's, exactly. Because well, what this means is, oh, we don't have to spend our money on the soup kitchen. We don't have to spend the donated money on the soup kitchen. So we can spend more of that, that's the non-federal money, on the gym, on the entertainment system, or whatever yeah. whatever they want to put in. Because the government's going to take care of the soups. Soup kitchen. Exactly. So it does end up, no matter what, it will improve it, even if they use the money that comes in specifically exactly. for the soup kitchen. It, it upgrades everything else. Exactly. Yeah. And they just keep exactly. the same soup kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. that should have been a higher priority of churches try to say they're charitable and they're putting that money to good use. Yeah, and you know, yeah. my, this, this, I don't recall this church that I went to having any sort of a facility that was just purely, you know, well, the gym, maybe. I mean, I guess theoretically anybody could have gone into the gym if yeah. they felt like it in, in you know, yeah. thrown baskets, or or played bas- you know, played racquetball, what have you. But still, I don't know of any uh, of any part of the building that was set aside and saying this has absolutely nothing to do with this church's ministry. This is a purely secular room in the corner. Uh, you know that people can I don't know have you know uh, uh, yeah. you know a, a Kiwanis Club meetings in or something like that or just what <laughs> have you. It just it, um, but still, uh, how how do they do the oversight? And exactly. doesn't the fact that if he's going to make these monies available, if if there has to be oversight, then aren't we getting into the whole unconstitutional exactly. realm of the government is now having to monitor exactly. what goes on in churches? It has to watch what is actually going on every day inside of churches, how they're spending their money, how they're improving their, their building and such. And so this actually hurts the churches. Yeah. This is, because this is government intrusion into religion. Exactly. Which is what the, so this isn't just about us atheists not wanting our atheist money to go and pay for Christian stuff. Yeah. This is about the government, the Bush administration is going to be big brothering churches yeah. now. And intruding with the yep. freedom of people to worship as they see fit because they've well, got to make sure that this money that you're getting is only going to this little thing and exactly. not going to the other 98% of what the church is doing. Exactly. Exactly. And why, why can't the Christians who support Bush's faith-based initiatives see this? Because why do they just turn churches. a blind eye to this? Because it's their own churches. But it's their own churches that are going to be getting spied on by the government. Unless, of course, yes, the Bush... they'll be also getting money for it. But unless, of course, the Bush administration is going to be, of course, completely hypocritical and not have any oversight. Of course. And say, oh, well, we'll trust the churches yeah. to police Do themselves. Do you promise? Yeah. Which okay, is what then, he did, which is how it worked in the state of Texas. When yeah. Bush was governor here, these religious organizations were expected to police themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Did they? As if that's really going to work. Yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> you know the is, churches aren't is the Pope Muslim? It. Come on. They're not just doing it for the money. It's just they see this beautiful symbolism in that it's coming from the government. There's a connection yeah. Yeah. to government. Yeah. I mean, and the people who want this are thing. theocrats who want, American to be, who want America to be a Christian religious state. They yeah. want Christianity yeah. to be how America's state religion. This. Government's constantly positioning this, yeah. as in all religions have been persecuted so badly <laughs> And they have been, you know, we haven't been able to give them any money. They've been, you know, thrown out in the cold, can't help anybody. But we don't charge them taxes. Yeah. So. Excuse me. Christians, uh, churches persecuted, thrown out in the cold, not able to yeah. do anything. Look in the yellow pages. Look in the Austin yellow pages. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. You'll find something like two dozen pages of church listings. And look at the people who are throwing them lots and lots and lots and lots and lots yeah. of money every single service. Yeah. I mean, tell me that Riverbend Baptist Non-taxed Church is hurting. taxed money. Yeah. And if there are churches out there that need renovations that are falling apart, apparently it doesn't mean that much to people. Exactly. They would donate. Yeah. Exactly. You know? oh, t- yeah. Tell me that Great Hills Baptist Church is hurting financially. Tell me that Riverbend Church is not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. look at those places. There's huge complexes. There's multi-million yeah. dollars. Telling me that oh they're not able to but do the stuff because they can't been get discriminating against them yeah oh yeah but they're the money they're horribly discriminated right. oh, against yes. you can like tell our money yeah, yeah you can tell how yeah. discriminated they are I mean just drive by and look they're, at the terrible they're shabby in such pain yeah there's the shabby conditions of these enormous multi million dollar you know thirty acre complexes they have and you know yeah. I mean yeah. they must be they're clearly persecuted you can tell just by looking at the facilities <laughs> jeez yeah there's also an interesting spin on it here that I haven't mm. heard of before. Uh, once religious entities start arguing that any portion of their building is for non-religious purposes, 
they start opening themselves up to all sorts of problems like their tax tax exempt status mm-hmm. as religious institutions. It's a whole Pandora's box. Yeah. It's it's interesting, yes, that that now they can say that you know, well, you're not a religion anymore. Yeah, you're not entirely a religious service, and so yeah, you're not going to get tax exempt services. And now, if twenty percent of your building is used for secular purposes, we can start ta- taxing twenty percent of your income or something like yeah, that. That's right. So or just you know, there's yeah, hitting them with the uh, yeah, the, just the taxes for the the twenty percent of that exactly. uh, the, the structure exactly. Um, Boy. So. And again, I want to know. I mean, I, I am dying for the, you know, the, the Raelians to apply for tax money you know, under <laughs> know. this faith-based initiative. I'm di- I want and, to see and the go si- on the news and say faith-based initiatives are helping us. We are now getting federal government money from, you know, thank you, taxpayers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> taxpayer money to clone our next non-existent cloned baby. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this idea that churches need money, it, it, first it gives me this hopeful feeling that, you know, maybe are people giving up on the churches? Are they not going? Are they giving less money? Because that's a good mm. thing. But really, drive through Round Rock. I went I went through Round Rock recently, um, and there are so many lots with signs on them showing future churches. Mm-hmm. You know, really? Some of them with art, art, with uh, artists rendering of what the church is going to look like. They're going to have all these big, beautiful churches, wow. all yeah. kinds, even a Baha'i church. And uh, yeah. Oh, boy. So those, those people are wow. interesting. So, I mean, not only do we not need to maintain them, but there's new ones sprouting up all the time. Yeah, yeah. and you know, and they, but oh no, religion is this horribly persecuted thing in America. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh huh. Yeah. My parents, my parents' hometown, twenty four hundred people in the hometown. Okay. There are twenty five churches. <laughs> so there's like a church for wow. few, fewer than a hundred people. There's one church per you know one hundred people or less yeah. in that town. Yeah. Also, that's about the way it looked in Round Rock. I'm serious, because yeah. this is a new area. There were, you know, maybe a couple of apartment complexes being built down this, yeah. this road. Okay. Um, I mm. can't remember the road, but uh, but yeah, I mean, there must be there going to be six or seven churches built up there, mm. or two apartment wow. complexes, mm. which aren't that big. Yeah, well, they've got to have every little sense. Well, I hope that they can make it what, with all of the horrible discrimination they I, face. I know. I don't, I don't know how they expect to be around. They're yeah. going to cause each other too much competition when they have <laughs> yeah, too many exactly. denominations. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, new denominations are always breaking up and splitting up, and that's one problem with uh-huh. the government just giving them all yeah. this extra money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yes, they do need this money to stay in business, because otherwise the competition would drive them out. Aye. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie doo. A Baha'i church in Round Rock. That'll be an interesting spectacle. Yeah. <laughs> Just go to go. I'll check it out. If they have a gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they, if they get their latest uh, yeah. Yeah, really. wackiness of... I don't have yeah. any Baha'i paraphernalia. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I don't know if they do either. Yeah. I mean, they're just sort of like this... They're this like a we'll-take-anybody type generic theism. Yeah. yeah. And um, well, they, Yeah, they believe everyone's a prophet. <laughs> Muhammad, okay. Muhammad, Muhammad. All right. Um, okay. All okay. right. Uh, next piece of news, I guess. Um, there is an ancient tablet that is out there now that, mm. that's recently been found mm-hmm. um, in uh, Isra- in Israeli. Um, Israeli ge- geologists said Monday they have examined a stone tablet detailing repair plans for a Jewish temple of King Solomon that, if authenticated, would be a rare piece of physical evidence confirming biblical narrative. Hmm. Um, and what else is there? Uh, hmm. they, it, they were actually updating a mosque, and uh, they found these. It was it was clay tablets. Okay. And uh, they're inscribed. So with, what exactly uh, is this? Uh, what do they say? Yeah. What's it? What's what's this tablet supposed yeah. to prove? Uh, the sandstone tablet. The sandstone tablet has 15 line inscription in ancient Hebrew uh, that resembles description in Second Kings. Mm-hmm. Um. The words refer to King Joash, who ruled the area 2,800 years ago. In it, the king tells priests to take holy money to buy quarry stones and timber and copper and labor and carry out the duty in carry out the duty with faith. Hmm. If the work is completed well, the Lord will protect his people with blessings. Reads the last sentence of the inscription. Okay, so it seems to um, confirm the existence of some Old Testament king then. Ex- exactly. Okay. It, it's more evidence that potentially there's some actual real stuff in the Bible. Yeah. Which I never really disputed. I mean, yeah. Israel exists. Yeah. <laughs> no no uh, problem. 
So, well, at least this isn't um, as, you know, th- th- this... Some of the people there. ...might have, you know, a, a greater likelihood of authenticity than that ossuary... Exactly. ...that popped up a few months ago and was quickly shown to be a forgery. Yeah. The one yeah. that suppo- supposedly has Jesus' name on the bone box. Yeah, yeah. So, um, still, the photo there, of course you can't see it on the air, but it looks awfully well-preserved. Um, yeah, it does look. It looks all shiny and neat and everything like that. Yeah. So, so well, we'll um, see what future. Uh, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, from a yeah. cultural standpoint, that's yeah. you know, so. kind of neat. Okay. So, and uh, one really quick final story. Yay! Uh, new dinosaur fossil found. Oh. They're gonna be having science news, and yeah. I don't know how long. <clears throat> yeah, Just discover um, some stuff. Come on, guys. Yeah, and this is actually <laughs> in China, where they've had a couple different fossils come out. Not to, not to. Relatively recently, ah. that have been big ones. Um, this is one of actually a four-winged dinosaur fossil. Huh. Um, they have the Archaeopteryx, which right. has the wings on the on the forearms. Yeah. Uh, this is one where it's actually on the back back legs. Also, they have feathers coming off of that. Wow. Um, and also on the tail, they got some feathers on that too. So, um, so would this be another transitional fossil? Does he show hints of like well, both reptilian or? What, yes, it is more. Of a dinosaur with wing, with right. uh, feathers right. type thing, um, and they're saying this is most likely some kind of evolutionary dead end. But it does offer more evidence. Uh, the two main camps apparently out there of how dinosaurs became birds is mm-hmm. one: they were running along the ground really fast and eventually started, you know, <laughs> they just took off. They, were they just started so jumping and you know having <laughs> wings and stuff like that. Or uh-huh. they were actually in trees and they would start gliding from tree to tree. Right. Yeah. This is more evidence that are actually glider. The, li- the latter one. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that just seems to make more sense. So. That's great. When you find many close cousins to a would-be transitional form, it's almost as good as finding a transitional form. Exactly. Right? Genetic variation, or must be something mm. in exactly. there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it just so. goes to show, again, we have so much more left to discover and learn about exactly. how, we don't know it all. how life developed. That's why science is exciting. We don't know it all, but we're trying to get there. Way cool. So, so, um, yeah. so they're checking them out, and they're studying them, and... and We'll know more, I suppose. Yep. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, what's C called, or is it utterly unpronounceable? Uh, let me see. Um, mm. Microraptor Gui. Ah. So, Micro-raptor-gui. Not, not a very scientific name, apparently. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, that's but, fine. But, hey, mm. easier to say. Oh, neat. So. Well, that's, that's very cool. Yes. So. Awesome. All right, and that's it for the news this that's week. That's news. Okay, well, um... They all kinds of crazy, wild, wacky stuff going on on the planet. Um, I just wanted to mention one thing in the news. It's an article that uh, continues off with the Raelians that, uh, you know, we've spoken a lot about them. And I'm not going to talk so much about this interview conducted uh, between the journalist and uh, Rael, the leader. But I just want to describe okay. the setting because it's just okay. really humorous. Because when journalists speak to Rael, the head of the Raelian cult, mm-hmm. uh, they meet in a yellow room. The journalist is called, I have to call him a seeker, and when you speak to Ryle, you have Wait, to refer to The journalist him, is, is called, called a... the seeker. You have to refer to yourself as the seeker. And they sign a contract that they have to call Ryle his holiness Ryle. And boy, I don't think I could do that. I don't even no, think I, 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 yeah. I, I could say that to the Pope, even. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that, his I mean, holiness. what journalists would agree to do this, except well, you for know, those this that are willing to show for him. Yeah, it's the Washington Post. But, okay. Now, they but, had him on, Rael was on Crossfire, and they didn't have him in his yellow room. I mean, they had him in a studio somewhere, and they, they called him his holiness, but they didn't exactly, you know, genuflect and treat him with that much respect. I mean, in fact, it was a great... Great show. I mean, when they had him on, Paul Begala let him have it just right in the nads. It was yeah. beautiful. And every time they would ask Rael this this tough pointed question, right? He would claim that his earpiece wasn't yeah. working and I can't hear you. And um, are you a complete lunatic? I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just said, it. isn't this just a big publicity stunt for your organization, Mr. You know, Your Holiness? And I, I'm sorry, I cannot hear the question. Yeah. So, all right. And a good uh, quote in here. Well, Rael tells a story. Four men, three dressed in pure white from head to foot, seem to be guarding him, focusing on the needs of the man sitting in the plastic lawn chair covered by pillows and a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> futuristic alien technology, right? Lawn plastic chair, lawn pillows, chairs. sheets. <laughs> When this Is man there a big black monolith standing nearby, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when this man sneezes once, all four men jump up immediately for the same box of tissues. <laughs> They they wait on this guy hand and foot. Why? No, but and he a, hasn't figured it out, right? 
You're supposed to get hot young chicks to do that, not, not have... <laughs> there I, are, that's the whole point of being a cult leader. There are hot young chicks in oh, this I group, see. though. Yeah, it's I mean, a, at least David Koresh was, had enough sense to get that bit of the whole, you know, <laughs> it is a cult free leader love. thing going. You know? It is a free love sect. Ah. They say the Raelians celebrate marriage with big parties, and they celebrate divorces with big parties. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay to be married a day, a week, or a year. Extramarital affairs are okay, and they are, and there are gay Raelians and transsexual Raelians. Are they Galians? Galians. <laughs> <laughs> we are for freedom of people, Ryle says. We think nobody should interfere with sexual life. Okay, that's a good point. But at the seminars, people wear colored bracelets. Quote, if you want to be alone, there's one color. If you're a couple, there's another color. If you want to contact with another person, there's another color. So it's kind of like an alien dating service. <laughs> I mean, all churches have their well, social benefits, think, and so do cults. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> you know, not to singles, not to aliens. So do they have, like, trial memberships for if you want to sign up and mm. you know, not really, uh, you know, just try it out or <laughs> not really commit, but just go to the parties? Uh, yeah, well, I... But I just don't want to refer to that guy as holiness, so it's not no. it. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing, in their compound, they have mm-hmm. a, uh, a replica of uh, the spaceship that mm-hmm. took Ryle up. It's, it's, uh, the spaceship that took him there was mm-hmm. 22 feet in diameter, 8 feet tall, an exact replica is hanging down in the hall in a two-story room. Check out um, Ryle.com, and you can see a oh. photo of that spaceship. It's like it's supposed to be an exact replica. You can tell it's made out of paper mache <laughs> or something. And, and it's so small, and it's funny because it's li- right out of the 1950s, those mm-hmm. 1950s okay, saucers, yeah. and a yeah. staircase comes out, and there's such a little room in there and this huge staircase that you realize the stairs wouldn't even fit. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you, you walk in there, and it crunches. It probably crushes you. It's probably... If I were aliens, I would have sent Ron uh, to that thing. Oh, well. Yeah, but... Anyway, it's it's funny. That I, I never get humorous. tired of the railings. No, no. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. I need to get a hold of that UFO for my holy paraphernalia show. You though. do, <laughs> yeah. Do they do they sell a little like trailer? Mo- I just want to borrow it. Do they sell little little, little model kits or something, or make them available? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do have a model kit feature on their website of their embassy that they want to build in Jerusalem. Oh. An embassy for the alien. Man, you know, poor Jerusalem, right? I mean, it's like, don't put that URL on screen, Steve. We don't want, I mean, we'll mention them, but let's not, like, advertise <laughs> them, okay? I mean, let's not give them too much ink. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, but no. Um, yeah, the... Uh, da, 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 da. Wow. Poor Jerusalem. I mean, they just have, like, religious nuts of all stripes just, like, <laughs> swooping down on They're them. They're everywhere. And... Just, but it would be a great place to be just some sort of, you know, religious paraphernalia huckster, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just sort of wait for the tour buses of, you know, pasty white American Christians to <laughs> spill out in front of some yeah. overpriced hotel. <laughs> and Big just, black trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> Based on the true cross, lady. I'm going to have to resell all this uh, paraphernalia I collect eventually. I'm going to oh, have to well. do that. Okay, well, anyway, here, uh, there's a live call-in show, but, but we'll, and we'll, uh, you know, in a few minutes we'll go ahead and we'll put that phone number up, but uh, just let people call and whoever's watching us on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, but we got the Super Bowl, the Holy Paraphernalia Bowl right here. And um, Arlo has been on the show many times. And he, he this, just to give you a precursor, this this um, presentation that he gives has achieved national uh, popularity. He's gone to the, uh, you know, the American Atheist Conventions, now two of them. Yes. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, so you're, you're gaining a, a reputation now as, as for, uh, for, for this the presentation you do, and, and what's great about it is, of course, you can constantly update it, right? Because there's yeah. always new stuff being yeah. being pilfered. Yeah, it's... Uh, or, or <laughs> not pilfered, but what's the word I mean? Yeah, just, it, uh, it's fun to find this the kooky religious products and yeah. share it with non-believers, and and most believers alike seem to think it's ridiculous too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's very easy to update because just yesterday, me and my wife went on a shopping spree. Actually, we only went to two shops. We went mm-hmm. to one fundamentalist well, Christian shop. Are. Let's not no, you mention no. that. And but... we went to one Catholic uh-huh. shop. And between the two of those, I got enough stuff for a whole other sh- show right here. Yeah. Well, what's the best, what's the cool, what's the most interesting um, um, stuff that um, <laughs> that the pious can Take purchase? Yeah. yeah, well, um, this I thought was pretty revealing and symbolic. Why don't you zoom in on that if you can? Pretty tiny. I'll show you mm-hmm. the tiniest thing first. Okay. Little decal for your car. Okay. Or for anything. It says, Jesus loves the hell out of you, and the hell's in flames. <laughs> wow. real, real appropriate for Christianity, because you know, it's just amazing. They, they yeah. want to hold true that God is infinite love, hell is infinite torment, and they occupy the same space, just like the two yeah. words here, occupying the same space. Yeah, and Jesus, love and, and, and Christians have now, you yeah. buy this sticker, they've come up with a way that they can kind of swear, but not really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 
Because I wonder what Capalert would have to say about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, any, any mention of anything that could be cons- construed as uh, profanity would get a major negative rating from them. Okay, what do we have here? I found the Bank on Christ card. <laughs> Charge your salvation. Because <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. Well, hold it, out. hold it straight. Okay. So, yeah, they give you an account <laughs> number. And uh, let's give- take a quick closer look at this before I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Unlimited assets. L.J. Christ, treasurer. L.J. <laughs> Who's L? What's what's L mean? Yeah, I, I have no, no idea. Lord. Lord. Jesus, Lord, yeah. Jesus, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. Okay. okay. Got to be it. Figure it out. Good, Good. thinking, Ashley. <laughs> Good through eternity. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these are a puzzle. Here, you win the, the prize. What in the world are they talking about? <laughs> All One right. thing I found that kind of creeped number. me out <laughs> is this little card. It says, a letter from hell. Ah. And you're supposed to give it to Christians. It says, dear Christian, Christian, quotes. Oh. And it's written like it's a letter of someone you knew who died. And they're in hell. And oh, they're trying like to chick-track? give you a guilt trip. It's like a chick track. Oh, that's it's not. It's not a chick track. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, these things have been around a while. This was printed in 1987. They're still s- selling them. All right. But uh, I just think that's that's kind of crude. You know. <laughs> uh, well, what what does it say? It, uh, I thought you were my friend for years as we shared our dreams, joys, and tears. Oh, well, no, I it's a poem, poem, even. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a poem. Yeah, it oh. yeah, so in other words, you've, it's your fault, I'm in hell. You know, that's uh, essentially your, what yeah. it is. Yeah. No, that's I'm essentially, in, I mean, that's, that's yeah. the whole point of it. Okay. Yeah, they have a chick track that's very, very, very similar to that where, yeah, it's the lady and she's yeah. having this dream that her friend's in hell. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and here, there's another letter on the yeah, other she, side. You know, if, if only you would have told me that I wouldn't be in hell. So it's the letter on the reverse side of this card, which is the one that you can see on screen, hurt me. It hurts to think of the hundreds and thousands already in hell who could have written it. It hurts when I think I may be responsible for the one there who could have written it. So this is now it, it, this is now guilt tripping people who are already Christians mm-hmm. for not going out and proselytizing enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This and is a little say, bit worse than a chick track. At least a chick track was a... Uh, uh, a story, yeah, you know, a yeah. dream a woman exactly, had. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, wow. this is more personal. I guess so you give a, this, you hand these pe- the people at a funeral. I mean, what do you do? Uh, yeah. yeah, this is. I mean, again, this is <laughs> the, the parade of, of tastelessness continues. <laughs> wow. Uh, what, what else? What else have we then? Uh, this is this is funny. You know those security signs. It, uh, when you get a security system, they put a sticker on your car window or on your house window or whatever uh-huh. to show burglars oh boy. that you're protected. It says, warning, this property protected by angels, wireless security system. <laughs> it's, it's to scare away those good Christian burglars, the religious <laughs> religious spiritual thieves yeah. out there. Otherwise, it just won't work. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So that's well, they, they didn't have one of those stuck up on the World Trade Center, obviously. Yeah. And in time for, oh yeah, we got candies. Here's some fish mints. Uh, Not that they're fish flavored, but they're Jesus fish shaped mints. Well, so y'all can have, y'all scripture can... mints, reaching the world one piece at a time. Bible verse inside. You know, intense wintergreen. We started out with testament. Yes. Oh, hang on. The Christian breath Wait, mint. these really are little, uh, little, fish, little f- fish mints. Well, I don't know if we can get that, but. You probably can. They smell good. They're very cool. Yes. Yeah, they can smell them. And, and it do. Yeah. have a little... Okay, what's a whole school of them in there? There's a whole school of them. Help me! They're not bad. I'm going to try uh-huh. Second Corinthians oh. something or other. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And oh, they also have Almighty Mint. Whoa. <laughs> God Mint. And okay. as a quote, the breath of the Almighty gives me life. <laughs> So you too can have the breath of the Almighty. So does like God Almighty have mint? Is that an implication that God has bad breath? Yeah. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. So on the first day, did God have morning breath? <laughs> okay, we have to do the um, AB. I'm sorry, AB comparison here. Okay. These are Whoa. the uh, yeah. oh, these little are crosses on them. Yeah, these are like little ecstasy oh, yeah. tabs, I guess. Um, you know, mm. uh, with little crosses on them, and <laughs> mm. um, you know they're kind of searchy. Here, why not? <laughs> Wow, you make our breath heavenly fresh. It all started with the testaments. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, Christians like to cop, uh, Christian manufacturers like to copy things in, you know, in the secular mm-hmm. uh, market, and the testaments were the one original idea mm-hmm. that I've seen in yeah. Christian products. Yeah. But then all these other companies started copying that, and sure. it's more than just these two additional ones. If you go to almost all the Christian shops around where the cashier's desk is, they have hanging dozens and dozens of all kinds of religious mints. That's all you can get is mint. Oh, wow. It's no uh-huh. fun anymore. I used to get the. I used to be able to get the God is good raspberry truffle. And yeah, no. we had the bubble. We had the gum last time too. Yeah, yeah. they had the, the gum with uh, the scriptures on the New wrapper. Testament. It was wrapped up in the it's called yeah. New yeah. Testament bubble gum. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not what yeah. makes it New Testament. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. right in time for Valentine's Day, 
scripture candy, those conversation hearts, the little hearts that have oh, messages yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a little too risque for um, for Christians, you know. Oh. It usually says, you know, you're a sexy boy and stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to pass those out at church. So we have these things here, and I haven't opened them yet. Oh, well, it's not But okay. what I thought would be funny is... You know, I mean, mostly these are for, not for church, but for handing out people at work. A lot of uh, so websites... So these are, wait, these are Valentine, a little heart Valentine mints. Right. But with and, a Christian, I guess, platonic uh, abstinence spin. <laughs> on. Lots of websites that sell these things, mostly they say their purpose is to get so religion much, in the workplace. You. Share mm-hmm. with your co-workers. You know, and so if, uh, like, a, in the hottie in the cubicle next to you gives you one of these, don't get your hopes up high, because, you uh, know, it might say, He, he lives... lives. <laughs> he li- are they talking about Elvis? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And or it might be... Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. There we go. Oh, there there you go. Down. I'm Yay. hungry. Got God. Peace, love, joy. Very disappointed. Oh, this one's crooked. Jesus bless me. I chew. That's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I real mean, self-centered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love the Lord. Yeah. I'll Peace, love, joy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll get... Now, don't spoil your appetite. Notice one that's, like, the color of a... This one has nothing on it. Hey! Mm. Dope! Yeah. <laughs> so. That's for the atheists. Oh, uh, okay. There yeah. you go. Oh, yeah. all right. That's my night. <laughs> mm-hmm. dibs on that. I'm just going to eat all your Christian candy today, aren't I? <laughs> and there's another kind of mint called Evang candy. <laughs> and... You know how not, the, that doesn't just roll off the tongue very well, does it? Yeah. No. Candy canes, they have the white and red, and it's just, it, it's a myth that, that symbolizes mm-hmm. uh, the blood for Jesus mm-hmm. and the, the white for oh, his I've purity. Oh, I've never heard that before. No? Oh. Yeah, the candy oh, wow. cane, they say the blood and the, uh, the, the red, and it symbolizes his blood. That's real appetizing. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, now they added more colors. Oh, okay. So we have yellow represents heaven. That's... Hmm. Okay. The golden. I guess God's a smoker, right? Everything. That's <laughs> all <laughs> nicotine stain. Black represents our sin, so you can ch- mm. eat sin. Yeah. Why would they put that color in the candy? <laughs> <laughs> why would they? they oh, it doesn't touch the heaven one. though. Includes sin. It doesn't sin touch the heaven. So you have one. something to confess. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's it. And of course, well, candy is supposed to be sinfully good. And so, uh, <laughs> green represents growth in Christ, and and white for His purity. Hmm. Red well, always symbolizes blood. blood. Okay. Yeah. Um. Joy. Got myself a keychain hmm. with the message. It doesn't look very good. It's supposed to be a positive message, but I disagree. Mm-hmm. Good morning. This is God. I will be handling all your problems today. I'll not need your. I will not need your help. So have a nice day. In other words, wow. I mean, this, this is pretty much saying don't put effort in anything. Yeah. You know, God's yeah. in your control. Your problems, you're not yeah. responsible for your problems. Yeah, no, this fine. isn't positive. That's very no, negative. That is. On and the other hand, I mean, it would be every day. On the other, on the other hand, I can. Imagine that they would shift a lot of these on, like, tax day <laughs> or something. Yeah. So you have the whole forgiveness to <laughs> evade responsibility, yeah. and then yeah. you have this. So I will be, well, or just, it's, but it's okay. vague. I will be handling all your problems today. So <laughs> well, it's not to necessarily work. talking about sin. Yeah, it's talking about, well, I need to, need, did need to mow the lawn, but now God will do it. Thanks. <laughs> wow. This I didn't get a shot. This was a gift to me a long time ago, and I'd forgotten all about it. It's called <laughs> The Love Nail. The Love <laughs> oh, Nail. Yay. Yeah, go ahead and hold that. God straight. measured hold. his love for you in the length of this na- nail. So he loves you this much. <laughs> <laughs> that won't. Is that supposed to be like the what was driven through his hands? On the yeah, court? it's pretty small. Yeah. Well, they said Jesus was short in that latest article. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's a minute. Short and ugly. So, yeah. But, but wow. that would not. Yeah. yeah that's, it's, Hmm. Kind of strange. Okay. At that least, is at least it's as bloody as some of the other items that you've had in the past. Oh no. So. no. <laughs> yeah. And but, uh, this would have is, to be a much. I got the wildest thing right here. Oh boy. Okay. Now this looks like just an ordinary five dollar bill. So so things that appear to be ordinary twenty dollar bills. Uh huh. Now for a while I was uh, parking cars at a strip club. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Good for you. That's and, a good um, job. <laughs> you know, there are fundamentalist Christians who go in to the strip clubs. With Never. what look like twenty dollar bills, and they get a lap dance. Oh man! <laughs> and they give the dancers these twenty dollar bills, but when they open them up, it says "disappointed." Oh, God. Man, you won't be if you'll let Jesus Christ become the Lord of your life. Wow! Now, who the hell would want to join a religion <laughs> yeah. that goes way out of its way to do? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, first off, they they rip they rip you off, right? <laughs> first, I thought first off that a good Christian shouldn't be going in these places in the first yeah, place. Exactly. But then they go in there, they essentially commit they fake them out. Yeah, they commit theft of service, right? Which is a crime. Yeah. You know, they get these table dances, they don't pay for them, and I've seen what you know the doorman will do if a guy tries to stiff a girl on the dance, right? Mm-hmm. 
Who did they leave? It's so dirty and what is, they don't know until afterwards. What, exactly. Later in the day. Yeah, and what makes them think that anyone would be remotely receptive to the message in here if exactly. after you... It's really cruel. You've robbed it them is. of $20 or $5 yeah. or anything. I've seen a lot of these. And not, but, but I've seen a lot of these actually in, 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 uh, just like strewn on the pavement on 6th Street. <laughs> I've seen them. You know, they're just wow. lying on the pavement. But I thought it was interesting. They're getting think, a oh, service that's some supposedly money. sinful yeah. for free. They're deadbeats. Yeah. yeah. And they get the valet. The five dollars are for us, the valets. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh well. Not right. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> not not the way to convert people. Yeah. No. no, no yeah. All. Please don't do that. Yeah. I mean, you're not exactly displaying ethics by yeah. you know robbing someone. And, yeah. Yeah. And when I show a lot of these crazy things, I have a friend who's ca- actually he's not Catholic anymore. Mm-hmm. Good for him. But when he was Catholic, <laughs> you know, he would say, "Oh well, well I'm Catholic, and we don't we don't have those crazy things." You know. Well, sure, of course, there's a couple of shops in town. They have their own paraphernalia. Uh-huh. Um, like okay, now we've seen standard rosary, rosary beads, fun for Mardi Gras, but right. You know, I can't get enough of these. <laughs> Love the Lord. <laughs> now there's um, in the latest latest in uh, rosary bead technology. Now you can put it on your card, a rosary card. What? Like, <laughs> charge your hail marys. What? Just, you go. You go. How through, does that work? You, well, you know how you feel the beads. Oh, and that's hail yeah. marys and all that. Now there's these dimples on the card, so you can just carry it in your wallet. A little more efficient. Okay, no. That's kind of oh, interesting. Geez. And it comes with a whole a whole manual on how to use it. <laughs> and also there's this. The, uh, Gaudy thing. It's, it's a ring. Horrible. Wow, that's like a <laughs> Jesus I, I, knuckle I, I duster. Yeah. <laughs> you put it on your finger and it digs into your other fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and you can really knock the sides of that. You knock the bejesus out of somebody with that, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty frightening. Can you pop bottles with it? <laughs> yeah, it looks, like it, it looks like it would work it's just handy. fine. I'm glad I got that. And he's not really, he's. Jesus doesn't really look like he's crucified on this. It looks like he's doing mm-hmm. jumping jacks. Oh, I didn't really... Oh, they <laughs> yeah. got the cross. No, the cross oh, is there, right? The but, but they've got Jesus, okay. his arms are like this. And so he's like Jack LaLanne. <laughs> or Richard Simmons sort of doing... Come on, people. <laughs> no, oh, I almost forgot this See, button. He should be straight out if he's crucified. Oh. Back to the Protestants. Ah. Um, there's this button. It simply says, God hates wimps and weenies. <laughs> oh. Where did you buy that? <laughs> At a Christian let's, store? Let's, yeah. let's teach our kids thought, to be wait, bullies. I thought God loved everyone. No, he hates you if you're a wimp. He hates dweebs. Yeah. Wimps and weenies. <laughs> oh, I almost yeah. forgot this. This is a good one. Uh, Little cards to hand out on election day. Elect Christ, elect Jesus Christ for Savior. You mean we get a choice? Yeah, I didn't know we could take a vote. You could do a, <laughs> you could do a write-in for Jesus. Mm. Jesus was elected, mm-hmm. apparently. Yeah. Ele- ele- and when is election day? Every three thousand years? Wow, that's yeah. wacky. And uh, oh, and what? one more thing. I I like this. This little bitty church here mm-hmm. doubles as uh, just a cute thing to have on your desk, and it's a pencil sharpener. And I and I like that because it's cute. here's a yeah. church. Here's the pencil. You got your anguish on a church. Ah, ah, ah. I just like the movement in that. Yeah. Take out all your hostility towards the church by stabbing it with a pencil. Uh, okay. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Boy. Oh, and Paul Wilson. Just to settle down there. Arlen. Gave me a really interesting gift here. Ah. Uh-huh. Settle down. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, pretty... Yikes. It's <laughs> not. A, it's not a mace. Uh-huh. This is a Hindu prayer wheel. One of the more interesting things I've ever been given. Is, Thanks, Paul. It is pretty. Um, it's, it's sort of a wedding yeah. gift to me in Gandega. And on it, these are actually, uh, these patterns are actually writing for Om Mani Padme Hum. Uh. And you have to, and as it spins, it's like reading, the universe is reading Om Mani Padme Hum. Om and you chant it over and over again. Essentially, it prays for you. So you can just spin this thing, read the newspaper. <laughs> oh. It's something that, that I think Hindus and Buddhists use. Okay. And, and what, what is the stone on the end here? The, the thing that looks like it's it was just, really... I guess I it's, it's self-defense. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Conk you. Yeah, What's funny down. is I don't remember which way you're supposed to spin it because you undo the... the Positive, oh, it, you undo oh. the positiveness generating from the universe if you do it the wrong way. So, oh, wow. right. If you spin it the wrong yeah. way, the universe will end or something. Does it have like one of those safety things so you can lock it so it only spins one way? Yeah, why didn't they do that? <laughs> yeah. This is a cheap one. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I like that. That's on a deluxe with, model. That would interfere with free will. Yeah. But, and also at That's some really temples, pretty, though. At yeah. temples they have this set up to where they have these mini poles yeah. with those attached, and so you can just run by and go against a bunch of them. <laughs> You get even more positive energy from the universe. Well, I'm feeling all energized and stuff. Bless our show. Yeah. Another gift. I to think me. they would make. It should make like an interesting noise, but it doesn't really. Yeah. Another gift to me. Um, ah. when I gave my um, presentation there? for American Atheists. Someone mm-hmm. gave me this. It's uh, 
Bible bread. And no, it's not oh. It's not made out of recycled Bibles. It looks like it. It's, it's, it's unleavened bread. And, Probably tastes um, that way, too. And he bought it from Amish people, they which know. I think was interesting because, you know, okay, it's Amish believe that you don't use modern technology. You know, mm-hmm. like they make the bread by hand, yet they package it. And it's obviously manufactured yeah. box. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh huh. Yeah, with um, barcode on Nutritional it. Nutritional information. Or Unleavened else. bread. Which, we're just going to chow down. We weren't going to need to go to dinner after this show. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, uh, Here's hmm. something for kids. Well, you can hand these out to kids on, on church. Oh, boy. Clap for the Lord. <laughs> pan back. Oh, God, that's not annoying, is it? Uh. Imagine a whole church of kids doing that. Uh. The whole purpose of that is so fundamentalist children can be. Annoying yeah. before they learn how to talk. Yeah. If you have an <laughs> autistic fundamentalist child, then that will, you know. Ah, what's this? Bible bank. Isn't it's a that? little Bible that children can insert money in. I brought something similar to this. It was a church bank rather than a piggy bank. It's a uh-huh. church. So kids learn how to get used to yeah. inserting money into the church. Right. And inserting money into a Bible, that doesn't make much sense. Why? Well, it does if you're, you know, Pat Robertson or, <laughs> or, or somebody. Or, so the Bible, I guess it symbolizes the Bible is yeah. va- valuable. It's worth for, the amount of quarters you can shove in its volume. <laughs> for the little future TV evangelist in your family. Ah. Huh. And one more magazine. Made in China. We can get the calls, but I just want to show Whoops. one more one more thing. Okay. Oh, candle. A sa- my latest Santeria candle. I have many oh. Santeria candles. Yeah, now these are all over, you know, supermarkets yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you, you find them everywhere. And I like this one because, uh, well, apparently, this is the hand of Jesus because there's a little hole there. And he's using the saints as finger puppets. <laughs> <Isn't> that <cute? laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Nice now, what if this one's supposed to, like, you burn this one for what purpose? Just to have it? Just, there's some... <clears throat> there's oh. different ones. Yeah, you give a prayer. and Prayer say, to the most powerful hand. And, okay. and yet it says, warning, keep out of reach of, of children and pets. <laughs> what, keep uh-huh. the powerful hand out of reach? Yeah. <laughs> specify. Well, hmm. <laughs> well, so, well, this is weird. It says, prayer to the most powerful hand, and then it says, I place the devotion of my sorrowful heart at thy feet. <laughs> okay, nice. that's a that's a brain twister. This is a this is a really bizarre wow. format for uh-huh. a bumper sticker. Three for the price of one. Okay, yeah. Sticker says, "Notice public schools need God." Dear God, and there's like a little letter here. Dear God, why do you allow so much violence in our schools? Signed, a concerned student. And then letter from God. Dear concerned student, I'm not allowed in schools. God, and. <laughs> Now, what a lot of, I, I railed before. off on that one so badly. In, okay, yeah. so yeah, you've you gone over this one because... Well, first off, how can an all-powerful being not be allowed anywhere, right? right? It's, it's a ridiculous yeah. notion that you can God-proof a school. Yeah. Is, yeah. is he staying He's staying out yeah. in turn, in, for spite? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's om- the only explanation is omnipotence, spite. Omnipotence trumps yeah. non-omnipotence all exactly. the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, and of course... You know, this is the typical fundamentalist, you know, Christian right lie, mm-hmm. right? Put the blame it's not on secular. It's not that God isn't allowed in public schools. It's that the government institutions can't bring him in. Well, cannot sponsor any particular religious faith. Yeah. Any, it is totally one hundred and twenty percent legal right now for any student in any public school in America to pray whenever the hell they feel like it. Yep. That's not illegal. The school itself, though, cannot endorse one religion. Yeah. That's what it's about. So this is this is basically di- a disinformation campaign, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. So yeah. and a really cynical one too, because they're exploiting violence in schools in order yeah. to win more converts. Yeah. So so it's, that's really kind of what else do we have? Yeah, one more thing. Okay, I one more. And then we'll, okay. Um, well, why not? I mean, it's fun. Christian coloring books. I always get a kick out of these things because. You, know, you get to, to color in the boils of Job mm. when God's making him suffer <laughs> for being such a good man, and mm. um, and I like the way they worded this in here. One day, God tested Job. An accident killed his children. Thieves stole his oxen, donkeys, and camels. Lightning killed his sheep, and most of his servants died. They somehow disassociate God from this. An accident <laughs> didn't kill his children. God, God did. Killed yeah. his children. Of course, they won't word it that way. Yeah. Well, you can't call that an accident. They just said God tested him because yeah. God blows down his house in and crushes yeah. his children and his uh-huh. Yeah. And um, thieves didn't. You know, okay, maybe thieves stole his oxen, donkeys, and camels. Because but God, the thieves were hired thieves by God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, lightning killed a sheep. No, God struck the lightning. Struck the sheep with lightning. Mm-hmm. Most of his servants died in the same thing. Yeah. God yeah. killed none the of servants. That none of that would have happened had it not been for God wanting to, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, look, I got this guy who's I all pious and believes in me. Yeah. yeah. Watch me mess with him. 
So like God is this you know, he's an evil prankster. <laughs> and then, of course, there's fun things here, like connect the dots. You can draw in the pectoral muscles on Jesus when he's nailed to the cross. Uh, you can't wait. You don't hold have to hold it. You're not. Yeah, 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 we need to get a good like shot of this. One of those. Here. It's sort of that like sounds like something a, horrifying. You draw. Hmm. Oh well, maybe well, not. Uh, Steve, no, don't worry about it. Bathroom. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. And I love some of the de- depictions on here because. Uh, this is the burning bush. And <laughs> <laughs> it's got a big sign I, I hope, on it. it. You can zoom in. There we go. Thank Look you, at the burning bush. It's so cute. Right That's God. <laughs> yeah. The burning bush. He looks like, <laughs> looks like Daisy Duck. <laughs> it's a, frag, it's a fraggle. And, and, and you get to color in the blood when God turns the water to blood. The Egyptian turns the, the Nile and who's this person Going on the right blood. having uh, And that's someone having frogs dropped on his head. Like in Magnolia, that's oh, based okay. on the Bible. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah. It and supposedly it really happened, according to Christian fundamentalists. It looks just like that. So so. There are frogs landing on people's heads, and they just wow. make it sound so cute. People being pounded by hail, and they draw little, they draw little smiley faces on the hail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can't okay. really see that from here. Oh, <laughs> Making wow. cuteness out of yeah. devastation Death. from yeah. the uh-huh. Lord. A soldier caught on fire and... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my. It's just all that, like, that's ah, good. I'm it's a... just all good fun. <laughs> I'm on fire. It's fun. <laughs> and um, oh, I didn't Isn't bring the right it? one. And sometimes you color in Jesus on a cross and say, well, that's, that's real, real nice. Well, give, give children images nice of people and burning and, yeah, you know, exactly. and like, it's, like it's funny. And they say violence in television is what corrupts yeah. that's the, yeah, Violence in the Bible is just poof, through to the roof. So yeah. this sex... Uh huh. <laughs> wow. Well, I've just uh, noshed on all your, uh, you know. I, I would be really feeling the love now. I tell you. But, wow. Thank you. Well, um, we're gonna go ahead and get to callers now. I mean, we've done this for a long time, but we weren't expecting that many calls today. Anyway, it's um, we'll be in Super Bowl Sunday, so. So, Arlo, you'll be our speaker next week at the Austin History right Center. Oh, and actually, um, all this stuff is just exclusive for this show. You won't mm-hmm. see any of this at the lecture. It'll be all new ah, to, to everybody there. Okay, cool. Um, so I've deal. given a lecture once in Austin before. This is going to be the sequel to it. So, it's oh. Holy Paraphernalia 2. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. now, if if like anyone out there um, has seen the uh, the 2002 American Atheist Convention lecture I gave, uh, whether mm-hmm. on the Internet or on video from our library, it will be much of the same. It will be much of that one. Okay. So, But for people who haven't seen the American Atheist Convention, this is all going to be new to you. Mm-hmm. So, but there will yeah, be some check of the, some of the uh, stuff from that uh, presentation and some new stuff, too, though. So it's mm-hmm. always always kind of chopping and changing. So it's at the his, history, um, Austin History Austin Center, History Center. Yep. Uh, next Sunday at noon. Uh, so um, that is where our lecture series has now been um, uh, transported since uh, First Cafeteria has shut its doors. So we're there now. So, all right. Well, thanks a bunch. And now in our last half hour of the show, we're going to go ahead and do our calls. Uh, like I said, we weren't expecting too many of them this week, and mm-hmm. that's fine. Good opportunity for Arlo to give a great presentation. Uh, hey, Russell. Hi, guys. Hi, thanks hey, for hi. holding. You know, I think my favorite one was uh, God Hates Wimps and Weenies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what is up with that? Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that. that said they're going to inherit the earth, you know? Hey, yeah, yeah. the yeah. meek shall inherit the earth. Well, the, the meek, not the wimps and weenies. If the I, guess, Bible, I guess God really subcategorizes some that kind of one carefully. Yeah. If the Bible doesn't contracept... Uh, con- contracept. <laughs> no, the Bible Supposed doesn't do. contracept, according to George W. Bush. It's like, uh, no <laughs> contraception ever. If the Bible doesn't contradict itself enough, then they got to print up these little buttons. Make it even mm. worse. God hates yeah, wimps right. and well, weenies. I just can't believe it. Just, just say whatever you want to say, and then say that the Bible backs you up, and mm-hmm. who's going to know? Because nobody really reads that, right? right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Except for atheists. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm I'm watching the show and recording the Super Bowl because you know I care so much about those commercials. Well, yeah, that's true. There, there's that new um, 60 second Matrix spot. Oh, oh wow. yeah, I got to see that. That's yeah, cool. cool. You so. know, I've noticed that atheists have a have a disproportionately high number of people who don't really care about football. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. uh, what's with that. <laughs> there, there's a few know. in our group, but very few are sports fans of any kind. Well, I don't know. I've always been. I'm I'm more interested in sports that I can participate in. Yeah, that's exactly the way I feel. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so I'm like. I love skateboarding. Yeah. With my friends. It's Mm -hmm. a great activity. Yeah. Um, Yeah, well, uh, anyway, uh, one one thing that I wanted to mention is that there's going to be no game night tomorrow because Ginny and I are both a little sick. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Feel better. Uh, Hope you're feeling better. Something going around. 
Oh, and yeah. uh, it's, it's good to watch the show because, you know, with the nonprofits off the air, this is the only good source of news I get now. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, of course, we're all going to keep scolding you guys and pressuring you to get back on the air. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you'll do it when well, you're ready. We're, uh, you know, we're looking into what's going to happen, yeah. and we're pretty sure we're going to bring it back eventually, but, yeah. uh, you okay. know, it could be a while. I yeah, hope it's okay. just a coincidence the show went off the air when I started being on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> well... Well, that's well, it was you fun know, to do. Uh, well, we'll uh, you know certainly look forward to seeing you. I guess next time at Gamers and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, um, you know, oh yeah, boy, yeah, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, there's a little sick one right there. Or hopefully, he's not sick. Uh, oh, that was Russell. Well, yeah. uh, a little bit, <laughs> oh. but uh, he's he's recovering, I think. Okay. Well, that's uh, anyway. Anyways, yeah. okay. Uh, so no Godless Gamers this week. Call. But uh, next time, uh, next week, uh, hopefully, definitely. All right, but right. take care. Okay. See, you. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, um, and Gary has been waiting online too. Uh, hey, you're on the air. Yeah, hi guys, how you doing? Well, just fine, Very having good. fun. I, I'm a uh, first time viewer, so I apologize if you've heard my question numerous times before. That's fine. Um, now clearly there's, uh, well, it's a presentation of the various religious goofiness and so on. I can see where there's a lot of humor in that. And again, not having seen the show before, I'm not sure uh, how you have different segments and so on in the air, but I'm, I'm interested in, when I see the sign behind you, Atheist Experience, I'm interested if you um, ever have shows where you focus on, let's say, the experience of being an atheist, not someone necessarily who is either opposed to or like to speak out mm -hmm. against religion and its role in politics and so forth, but, mm -hmm. you know, atheism in history, um, noted atheists, politicians, things of that sort. We, we've discussed that time and time again. We like to, uh, sometimes we'll have a, a guest on the show who will have a p particular subject that they'll want to discuss, and uh, sometimes that uh, subject will um, determine the course of how the phone calls go. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes we'll discuss, um, you know, um, for example, the political history of our country and what it really means, what separation of church and state really means, mm -hmm. and uh, things of that nature. And some days we'll just uh, throw open the show to callers for callers to uh, ask us whatever they feel like, and we'll just have a very loose, uh, loosely formatted uh, kind of free for all. So it all it all just kind of depends on what mood we're in. But we try to have, we try to uh, mix it up and have a little bit of variety, you know, every week, you know, to uh, in terms of what the topics might happen to be. But yeah, we do every now and again, sure. Okay, and and, and in terms of. Um I don't know if you can call it philosophy, but have you, have you discussed the differences? This might be perhaps an idea for a future show if you haven't already done it, but have you discussed the differences between strong atheism, weak atheism, agnosticism, and, and things of this sort? Do we have, and in fact, that is on our fact page, on our website. Oh. We, uh, we have um, a lot of the calls that we, we, we have over the years, and we've done this show for quite a number of years now, and um, we've managed to kind of co collect all of our most commonly, frequently asked questions, and... Uh, we put a lot of those up on the fact page. Of course, uh, you know that that's that can always uh, change and uh, you know expand uh, as time goes by. But uh, that would that does tend to be one of them. Like, what's the difference between an atheist and an agnostic? Uh, what is atheism? What is atheism exactly? A lot of people yeah. aren't, are, aren't really acquainted with that. I mean, is it uh, yeah. some sort of are you are are you just saying you don't believe in God? Are you making any sort of a, a definite claim that you can prove there is no God? What is what is it all about? So yeah, we get those questions quite a lot. Okay. And I was wondering if I get uh, one final comment. Since you guys clearly study religion and have a non-religious viewpoint of religion, I was wondering if you might be interested in contributing to an open source encyclopedia on either religion, atheism, or related subject. Um, the, the encyclopedia is called Wikipedia. W-I-K-I. -I. Yes, I know. It's a goofy name. I see it's all in there. W-I-K-I-pedia, uh, P-E-D-I-A. Uh, it was mentioned on NPR about a week ago. Um, currently has about over 100,000 entries. There are several thousand contributors, myself included, uh, okay. mostly in te technical subjects. And mm. there are a lot of people who post, um, let's say, non-neutral mm -hmm. uh, uh, articles related to religion, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially uh, uh, Christians. Yeah. And uh, since it's an open source encyclopedia you can write in and you can edit and correct articles you can create new articles yeah. you can add links to external websites uh, the idea being that you know eventually you're going to work towards a neutral definition of each uh, term or whatever it may be so that you know people have free and open access to information that's reliable and accurate well that, it's an, it sounds like an interesting idea um, 
If you would be so good as to, if you visit our website, sure. there, uh, there is a, a contact email address. I think it's just atheist at atheist-community.org. Yes. Go there and just uh, send us, uh, you know, and shoot some uh, information, more detailed information about it to us and links, and, and we'll read up on it and, uh, and uh, yeah, have a look at it. All right, I'll certainly do that. That would be right. fascinating. Great. Thanks. Right. Well, we appreciate your call, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to see if there's any representation towards you know, non-belief or atheism. Or could yeah, be. I'd, I'd like to see how it works. If it's free and open, and you can edit articles and stuff like that. Yeah. What's to say it's going to work towards a neutral definition of right. anything? If yeah, you know, if I, I mean, can go in there right. and change yeah. it. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the the one thing that I, I of course I, I want to see it first before. I mean, he was probably giving us a very um, of course overview in terms of his description. He was yeah. probably giving us a very just uh, broad overview of what it was all about, but. Um, I, I'm, uh, I, I mistrust this idea that um, facts about things can always be reached by, you know, what, I mean, scientifically, you generally do tend to, it, it tends to be what a consensus is in terms of yeah. how the evidence for a particular claim might work. Yeah. If most people observe a thing and they observe it cons- consistently across the board, and uh, you, at that point, you can pretty much uh, decide that uh, you can make a, a, a a, a firm, committed statement on how a certain thing works, and that yeah. is how you arrive at facts scientifically. Uh, it seems to me that that would be a little bit iffier to do about maybe philosophical or metaphysical questions, yeah. but um, arriving at a, a... I don't know that you could ever really arrive at a truly neutral definition of a, of a metaphysical concept just by everybody tossing whatever they think uh, their, their ideas into the hat, yeah. but maybe it's more sophisticated than that, and it's interesting yeah. that... Yeah. It sounds like an interesting thing that uh, he's involved, involved in or trying to do, so... We're very eager to look at it when we get yeah. uh, that info. Yeah. Uh, I'm told that we have, uh, well, I, I see a big green light on line three, but we don't have a name for it. So until we do, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep talking to Arlo some more. What up? Uh, any, any, any other uh, fascinating uh, things you've encountered on your adventures? This blows my mind. How, how do, uh, this is just the, the, um, the whole credit carding of the entire world now to where you have uh, yeah. rose you have rosary beads on a, on a credit card that are supposed to work somehow mm-hmm. you have a Jesus credit card yeah, for the Protestants yeah for the uh, and Jesus money yeah and, and hey aren't these things supposed to be the mark of the beast oh no wait that was give five charges. years ago and this one I, I guess this is just a number they made up I mean I don't know that these well, uh, do these uh, numbers here uh, indicate anything are they scriptures and if they are what are they because they're just numbers 323 623 1013 probably random generator maybe they're all the same number though yeah probably uh, very unlimited assets LJ Christ treasurer good through eternity wow well that must be some good laminate on this card then if it's, it's good just so eternity. horrible yeah I, I know that's just <laughs> that's just cruel this is just the unkindest cut of all okay I'm told we have a name now for line 3 is that right. Trake Trake Okay, uh, we'll see. See what's going on. Hey, what's up? Not much. Hey, hey, what can we do for you today? Nothing. I've been watching this many times before. Mm-hmm. I'm 16. I consider myself 18 since the age of 13. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've just been watching this and interested. Mm-hmm. Is there something you uh, like a topic you'd like to talk about? God in school. God in school? Okay. Or lack of. <clears throat> okay. Got, got in school. Is it like a law that's supposed to, be, that's supposed to happen? Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're not here yeah, yet. Yeah, we can't, yeah. Bad so, connection, maybe. Is there supposed to be a law that's, just, that's supposed to happen? Well, the, the way the First Amendment of the Constitution reads is that uh, the U.S. government is not supposed to either endorse a religion or prevent private citizens from practicing whatever religion they choose. Now, the reason in public schools, not private schools, but public schools, that once they have taxpayer money funding them, uh, you're not supposed to have, the government isn't, so those schools, because they're public, they get taxpayer funds from the government, can't be, like, having any kind, they can't have Christian prayers because not all your students, A, because not all your students are Christian, and B, if they had Christian prayers in the public schools, that would be the government saying... We recommend Christianity over other religions. I think this is a bad line. We're gonna have to. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah. you're you're. Yeah, you're yeah. you're feeding back on. So, hope we answered your question there. But we're, we can't hear you at all anymore. Okay, so, I'll just hang up and keep watching. Something's happening, but hopefully that answered your question. All right. Yeah, it was all spluttering. Yeah. Must have been yeah. on some cordless or something. Oh well. <clears throat> so that's it, and that's why the disinformation spread by this nauseating bumper sticker yeah. is so. Yeah cynical and um, 
Yeah, why are because you letting this violence happen in schools? God replies, I'm not allowed in schools. Mm. Well, okay, let's Whatever. take... Well, let's, for example, take the, the Columbine thing, which that clearly is a reaction to. Yeah. Now, you know, I think that the videotape that the Columbine kids, the killers, made, right, was made in the basement of their house. Yeah. So they planned the whole massacre outside of the school. Yeah. So God could freely have intervened then. Yeah. You know, there were all times, there were all sorts of opportunities outside of the realm of the school. If yeah. this all-powerful being somehow isn't allowed in there, yeah. you know, there were all sorts of opportunities for God to, you know, have protected these innocent people and have, you know, shown these kids the wrongness of their ways or what have you. Yeah. We also need to remember... So it's just pure nonsense, but it's cynical. It's just all, let's exploit this tragedy to win converts. Well, we also need it's, to remember that uh, also around that same time, there were some church shootings. Was God not allowed in there? Yeah, there were wow. people going. Yeah, there was the yeah. one in, in Dallas, as a matter of fact, wasn't there? Was it in Dallas? I don't there, know. Well, there, I mean, there, there were there, several. There have been a few, but there was one just in Dallas and Fort Worth. And in England, there was a crazy naked guy who ran in a church and started hacking people's fingers off with a sword. Yeah. Wow. I mean, stu- this crazy stuff happens all over. So there's yeah. no relationship there, whether God's allowed or not in the yeah. facility. That's and, ridiculous. And all of these, uh, the, the whole Catholic, Catholic pedophilia scandal, this was happening yeah, supposedly yeah. on church grounds. Uh, yeah. so. Fundamentalists would say God's not allowed in a Catholic. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, that's I true. mean, true. but that still, was a Catholic. again, this is just all a cynical exploitation of tragic events yeah. to win converts. Yeah. And it's really, really um, unpleasant. Yeah. Um, okay, Darby is on line one. Let's see. Hi, how you doing? Hi, very well. How y'all doing today? Uh, we're having okay, some good. fun. What's up? Well, I've been catching your show now and then, and I, mm-hmm. I hope to catch you all at Hot Jumble Bagels sometime soon. Mm-hmm. And I've been watching your little toys, and I think I've got you all beat. Okay. I got the Jesus action figure. Yes. Oh, do you have, uh-huh. the, do you have the original Jesus action figure? Well, how many of them? Is it a spoof, or is it something really sold at Christian shops? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Friends gave it to me. It's the, got text on the back, and it's got like Bethlehem with kind of a fiery looking sky for a background. Hmm. Um, in his hand, does he have a loaf and fishes? No, no. Okay, He's it got, might be a parody. Oh, okay. well, I can't yeah. There's probably two dozen companies now doing Jesus action figures. Oh, Maybe. but does yours have posable arms with gliding action? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. Yeah. It's yeah. so cool. I, think that, I don't that want one's, to destroy it. Have you filled up the tub to see if he walks on water? I wanted to. I think I can glide him across water. Okay. Cool. But he's so cool, I don't want to even remove him from the package. Well, yeah, because yeah, he, he's more collectible that way. I well, see. and also he's a, apparently a choking hazard to children under the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even even the original one says that too. Yeah, because the loaves and fishes. Because of the tiny little them. loaf, yeah. you yeah. don't want to choke on that tiny little loaf of bread. The oh. loaves and fishes could choke five thousand children. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think I'm going to start my own little collection because these are just so cool, and I, I like the toys I saw you with. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yes. I'm going to have a whole wall, hopefully. Wow. Well, uh, you know, don't awesome. don't impoverish yourself on that trivia, but right, it is yeah. fun. I guess it would be fun to uh, just collect and show off and amuse your friends with. Well, I just don't want to give the money to some Christian. Right. Sport. Yeah. One oh. thing I do. One thing I've been doing recently, and for this, uh, for my next uh, presentation, my first presentation, I had all the actual stuff. Mm-hmm. But my next presentation, you know, I didn't want to go broke. I didn't want to keep giving these people money. So eventually, I just kind of went in their shops with a digital camera, took a picture, and ran away. Uh-huh. And that, that's really worked out for me. I have no uh-huh. guilt or anything. It's great. At a certain point, aren't they like, hey? <laughs> I mean, do they wonder what you're up to when you no, scan into the don't, stores they and they don't take notice. pictures hey, of give products? Give me back my soul. <laughs> they don't notice. They don't, but one thing, one thing they do notice, I always, I always ask them questions, and they always say, you ask really good questions. Because very often, I'll hold up a bumper sticker that makes no sense, uh-huh. and I'll say, this doesn't make any sense. Could you explain it to me? I hold up a lot of things and say oh, that. Oh, yeah, Jesus and they're like, coming. Are you ready? That uh, are one you had a while ago? Oh yeah, yeah. I that remember. one. Then. No, no, that makes yeah. sense. And the way you said it makes sense. It says exactly. Jesus is coming. R, you? letter R, letter U, and a red E. And of course, if you think about it that way, it, it, you know, yeah. if you hear yeah. "Are you ready?" It's, first, it makes sense. Yeah. But are you? And I, and I thought, this what does that red stand for? E on Rue, because it looks like it Rue. just spells Rue. Because Rue but means the e is, something. Rue yeah. means yeah, the regret. And yeah, Jesus is coming. Are, are you Rue? regretting? Are, yeah, <laughs> Jesus is coming. Rue. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, so. But then there's this one. There's one bumper sticker that says, um, "His time is coming." We have no speed limit, and it has like six, a 65 miles an hour sign with a circle and a cross through it. And Christian speeding? Wait, he, and his time is coming. 
We have no speed limit. Yeah, no, his time is coming, no speed limit, and it has an X out over a 65 mile an hour sign. And I and I ask, what what does this mean? Yeah. And, and they always say, oh, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I'll ask my manager. Oh, he doesn't know. Hey, what does Why are you mean? selling it? And <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, I guess oh, they, they, wow. they just get these catalogs and and you know, order the stuff in bulk. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't figure that one out. And oh. His time is coming. No speed limit. And there's a uh, there's a bar through a speed limit sign. Yeah. And there's there's another good question uh, I have. I, yeah. Why do you still have Y2K compliant scare pamphlets? They still have pamphlets saying why the Y2K bug is coming. Are you prepared? And it wants you to repent in Jesus' name because there wow. might be right now nuclear a war resulting. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, maybe not. I haven't checked. Well, I haven't checked in like maybe six months. Well, you just, six months ago they had them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, then again, but then again, we had the caller into the show a long time a while back after Y2K had you know come and gone. Uh -huh. And he said, you know, well, you've got to watch out. This is like in mid-2001. He was saying, mm -hmm. you got to watch out for this Christmas. We're going to have the Y2K bug. Oh, like, he probably what are, what are you that talking about? Well, he, and he's like, well, it didn't happen. Y2K, it's got to happen eventually. Oh, no, his, no, his rationale was that <laughs> the 21st century actually begins in 2001. Oh, Okay. And we had to point out to him, no, no, yeah. the, the whole Y2K bug was the, the concern the that the, the first two digits yeah. weren't going to turn from 19 to oh. 2. But I thought Clearly. this was even after 2000. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah. But hey, great to hear from you. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, oh, hey, guys. I just hope to catch you a hot jumble, some, hot jumble, hot yeah. jumbo sometime. Yeah, and uh, Arlo is doing his thing uh, this Yeah, the History Sunday. Center this weekend. So, yeah, you're not meeting... This coming Sunday. Yes, but, this coming you Sunday, well, your thing. Well, this coming Sunday is, is your thing. I meant at Hot Jumbo, though. Exactly. Yeah. You're, yeah. No, no, not a hot making jumbo. it clear for the... Yeah. Okay, oh, this yeah. Sunday where? At the Austin History Center, 9th and Guadalupe. And I think uh, inf Starts information... Starts in the mayor room. In the yep. mayor yeah. room. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right at noon. Right at noon. Yeah. And information... We'll brunch. And... Information's on our website on the okay. events page. All right, cool. Thanks very much. Bye. Hmm. William is on line three. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, hi, what's up? Uh, hey, just just yeah, hanging out, up? having fun. All right, I, I didn't catch your names. Uh, what was your name? Uh, I'm Which Martin. That's Ashley. That's Arlo. What was your name? I'm Martin. Martin? Yes. All right, uh, it's my first time watching the show, and I was just uh, curious, um, talking a lot about Christians and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what's your views on other religions? Well, we don't believe in them either. Yeah, much the same. I got yeah. my Hindu prayer wheel. I think they're full of it too. Yeah, so. we uh, we um, you know we're talking about the reason we well, we get this question quite a lot. Why do you talk about Christianity so much and you don't let the other religions have it? And that's kind of unfair. And it's mainly it's we live in America. America, the predominant religion in America is Christianity. So we do talk about that most frequently. And also today we have Arlo on as a guest, and most of this uh, amusing paraphernalia he's bought is comes from Christian shops. Because so, they're everywhere. So it just kind of happens to be that uh, that's the that's the topic of you know today. Right. We've we've had shows where we've talked about UFOs mm -hmm. and psychics and yeah. uh, the Raelians with that recent yeah, we had cloning. the big Raelian show. Yeah, when a couple they, weeks back. Yeah, when they were claiming that they cloned a person and we yeah. we let the Raelians have it. So yeah, I mean we're we're we present a critical you know skeptical view towards uh, you know all claims of the supernatural. And actually, um, at the end at the very tail end of the show last week, someone called in about chakras claiming mm, that yeah. by understanding right. your chakras, you can tell your past lives mm -hmm. and your future. And you had asked him to call back. I hope he calls back because I have an opinion on chakras. Yeah. I, well, they, I, they don't I, exist. I'd like to yeah. discuss that. <laughs> right. Right. And how I and how I know they don't exist. Yeah. Or how I know that we we have no knowledge to to yeah. to assume such a thing is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have? Uh, okay. So, uh, any other questions? Oh. Uh, um, well, like, what do you think about those people? Like, I don't understand. Like, the people that do believe in God. Well, yeah, we like, don't have a problem with people, right? I mean, I understand. I come from a religious background. Uh, so does Ashley. Yep. Um, you know, Arlo, you have, I don't. You I don't. don't but, but I mean, I have friends. But we all have. We all have who, Christian who friends, and, yeah. and that's fine. I mean, I you know, people. They people have, have. They have the right to believe whatever they want to believe. It's when they start pushing it on other people in certain ways. Yeah. That's where you start having pro slight problems. I mean, there there are people in uh, in you know in in politics who want to sort of push a exactly. theocratic agenda, and, uh, exactly. and and we don't think that's right. If if a person does something that's that deserves criticism, we'll we'll get them for that thing. But you know, I don't you know we don't have a problem with Christians as people or our religious people as people. Uh, but uh, you know we're ju we're just here to present uh, you know criticisms of the beliefs and and debate them back and forth on the show with callers. All right, we like it to make it clear that. Um you know, having religion doesn't make you a bad person. We just like to point out that a lot of people do rotten things 
in spite of the fact that they have religion. So it doesn't prevent you from doing some of these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there are some rotten premises in religion um, that do more harm than good, but um, most people, most religious people ignore their own scripture, so they usually come out okay. Uh, would you consider atheism a religion? Oh, that's another one on our fact page. You know, atheism yeah. is like theism, okay? It's not, doesn't indicate, it's, it's a philosophical position, but it's, atheism is just the lack of belief. Yeah, I know, anyone. like, do you, do you think it's like a group of people? Like religion as a group of people? Well, not in the same way as religion, right? I mean, atheism is more like theism, right? I mean, a person could be theistic, right? You could believe that a god exists, but you're not necessarily religious. I mean, religion implies yeah. that... How do, you, how do you define religion, basically? Well, religion defi- is de- in, in the dictionary. Yeah, I'm just it's, saying, like, a group of people no, believing in the same thing, doing the same thing. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, are atheists, or they, do they consider themselves a group of people that believe the same thing? Well, no, okay, athe- religion. well, because atheism, atheism is defined by... Oh, atheists are defined by what we don't believe. So oh, in that reg- okay. So in that regard, we don't. Now... No, once you're an atheist, right? So you're right? saying we, like, as in we, as in the group. So you well, consider- anybody, anybody who calls himself an atheist, well, the, when, when, you, when you are an atheist, what that means is you are a person who does not believe that there are any gods. So if you don't believe in any gods, then an atheist is what you are. Now, not all atheists join atheist groups, but, um, you know, but once a person is an atheist, now, whatever other beliefs they may want to have, that's up to them. I mean, and, and you get a, as wide a variety of... Varying belief, you know, you have atheist conservatives, atheist, atheist liberals, atheist libertarians, atheist objectivists. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, but atheism specifically has to do with not believing in a god. Beyond that, you know, some either you could have any kind of philosophical stance, and we get into lots of arguments with each other about them. So um, that, <laughs> that definition of religion you gave, I don't think that's very useful because yeah, just it's... a group of people believing the same thing. I mean. You know, there's a was it? There's something called Spam Fest, or you know, mm-hmm. it's a group yeah. of people getting together because they like spam. You know, they believe spam is tasty or I whatever. Mean, Buffy I mean, yeah. fan clubs is that yeah. a religion? Yeah, so. yeah. Right, people Britney play. Spears fan club. That's exactly. what I, yeah. I mean, just it's it's a group of people getting together. They all have the same interests. Now I'll think that Britney has the best music out there. Is that a religion? So. Yeah. yeah. But right. Supporting that re- definition, yeah. But. Yeah. So you don't want to. I mean, I think reli- the, the term religion, you know, it means a specific thing and. Uh, many times when we talk to people who are religious who want to try to include atheism as yet another religion in order to sort of discredit our position, end up having to broaden the definition of re- what religion is so wide that it really doesn't mean anything s- uh, specific anymore. Another word yeah. for religion is, many people call it a faith. The a religion, a faith. Yeah. And atheism is not a faith. You know, we derive of our knowledge through rationality. We demand evidence and skepticism and... Well, yeah, there's no, a lot of other a, religions out there. That, of faith. It's not a faith. It's mm-hmm. like there's a lot of religions that live by experience mm-hmm. and just by like being happy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're not all just faithful in like a god. Not everything is into a god. Well, yeah, like like Buddhism is actually yeah. an atheist religion. But it does okay. have quite a bit of faith. I mean, but it has a lot of. I mean, they have they have their own. Other things. They I mean, have to their believe own. The Dalai Lama claims. is reincarnated but, from the previous Dalai Lama. But they don't have deities. And in that regard, not having a deity. Yeah. But, uh, but, of course, we don't agree with the Buddhists in that. So, anyway, hopefully that clarified. Yeah, just one last question. Um, sure. Wait, let me think of it. Okay. Well, hurry up, because we got a couple more callers we want to try to get uh, before. Uh, okay. You can always ask us All a question. Right. Y'all take it easy, man. Yeah, try us okay. next. Uh, we'll be here next Sunday if you want to call us again. Take All care. Right, okay, Mike is on two. Hey, how you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, I just want to confirm something. On your website, it says your meeting next Sunday is at 11 o'clock, and you guys have been saying at noon. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe that, that needs to be a correction. The, the lecture series is at noon now. Okay. And the, uh, the, the bagel shop meetings are still at 1030. Okay. Okay, so thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Hope to see you next Sunday, then. Oh, well, thanks okay. very much. Great. Thanks. thanks. Thank Bye-bye. Okay. And Cliff on one? Let's see. Hey, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wanting to know what happens when you die. Do you have any idea what happens to your soul? Do we even have a soul? I mean, what goes on after you, you die? Because I found out that uh, there's a possibility that I had contact with a woman who has AIDS, uh-huh. and I'm not sure if I got it, but I'm going to get tested this week. Oh, that's it, well. It's a scary situation for yeah. me, and I've been crying that. about it a lot, and mm-hmm. you know I don't know what to do, and, and right. but well, I'm going to get myself tested, and I'm hoping that you know I, I'm yeah. negative. So well, so do we. So and do we. I kind of want to know if I do die from this 
terrible disease, uh, mm-hmm. what will happen to me? Well, first off, I would say, you know, don't give up hope this early, right? I mean, you haven't even been tested. Yeah. And let's say if your test um, and we, you know, absolutely um, hope uh, completely that it turns out negative, but in the, let's say in the unlikely event that you get a positive uh, reading, Remember, that's, it's not all over for you, right? I mean, remember, you know, look at a guy like Magic Johnson now who has been living with the disease now for something like 15 some odd years. Yeah. The treatments now are uh, becoming more sophisticated as we learn more about the uh, human immunodeficiency virus. And uh, there are effective medications that are, enable people to stave it off indefinitely. And, and they're just going to keep getting better as more and more research happens into medical research happens into the studying of this virus. So I would say it, it, it would um, again, we all hope with you that uh, this didn't happen uh, and, and that you're, you're completely clean. But in, in the unlikely event it is, uh, you could still continue to live a full life right into old age, uh, you know, um, oh, because really? because the treatments now are. Be getting well, better. Yeah, be, I've just be, heard stories about you know people well, dying a lot sooner than other people, so I don't. Yeah, right. That happens well, too. But you're lucky to be alive in this this time that we live in. I mean, through most of human history, the average life expectancy was 24. Yeah. And if there's a good possibility you can live a good 10 years from whatever even age as, you are now, yeah. I mean, you're pretty lucky. Even as recently yeah. as 100 years ago, the, in the year 1900, I think the life expectancy for an American adult male was 47. Mm. That's just 100 years ago. Now it's up into the 70s, and, and it's just going to keep getting better as more uh, you know, life extension uh, technologies. So my life is possibly isn't over, I mean, just because I no, may have to No, no, not, and, and, I can, and, and believe me, I understand, I, I mean, I, can, I, 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 can, I, I can't even conceive of, I mean, I'm sure it's very frightening, but again, I think that, um, you know, I assure you that, uh, that, that um, there is no reason... And you shouldn't. I mean, you, you know, no one should ever give up. Even I, I just all believe in being a fighter, you know. And, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean, I mean, even in the unlikely event that it might turn out to be, you might test positive, mm-hmm. get another test and get two or three tests. Yeah. And uh, because you can get false positives. I've had people, I've had friends of mine get tested for HIV and it comes up false positive and they're all freaked out. And then they take two or three more tests and they're all negative. That can happen. So, but even if you come out positive, uh, in, in, and, I, and, and again, I, you know, let's not think that way. Um, but if it happens, you, there is no reason why you just cannot continue to live a full and healthy and happy, productive life. You know, uh, you'll be under quite a lot of medical treatment, but at least that treatment and that research is there and it's getting better. And there, is all, there are all sorts of people out there um, living with AIDS in long term and, uh, and continuing to be healthy and productive. So, um, you know, uh, so you've got a lot. You've got a lot on your side. Okay. Yeah, but uh, again, we hope that you're a okay and completely healthy. And I'm sure uh, there are um, resources online and you know, various uh, community resources helping people, like with counseling and whatever, what have you. But again, I hope you don't, you don't need that. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. All right. Yeah, yeah. Certainly we believe life is limited, but, uh, I mean, the yeah. more you recognize your mortality, the more appreciative we shall become of life. Yeah. I'm saying that, that's the way it is for me. That's the way it is for other atheists. Yeah. That's also a drive for us to actually get out and try and do something about that. Yeah. That's because the, the, thing is, because too, the so. caller's original question, the young man's original question was, well, what do you feel about the afterlife? Is there, is there yeah. some way that we could... And, you know, I... I didn't want to really get to that because, well, of course, as atheists, we don't believe that there is in any sort yeah. of supernatural yeah, bit yeah, of us. That, that, that's that. We don't you know, we, I mean, could be, but no evidence for it. And what I, I think that it is much healthier for a person who might be having some horrible medical crisis to let them know, look, you know, this life yeah. is worth living. You can fight for it. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of medical yeah. science on your side. And there is no reason to, you know, and, and that focus. is much, that's much more healthy, I think, than yeah. just saying, oh, but don't worry, because God will take care of it, and you'll have a nice, wonderful right. mansion in heaven if you die. Exactly. The last that's not thing, a positive, that's not, yeah. that doesn't yeah. do anything Superstition for is the last thing you need if yeah. you have an illness. Yeah, exactly. In our yeah. age, when we can do something about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. The, the, and we have the potential to do something yeah. about it. We don't have a, a cure. With, without, but, without good, strong evidence... Otherwise, you know, the best bet that we can make, you know, the, the, the best, most rational conclusion we can make is that this is the life we have to live and, and it's worth it and it's worth fighting for. And and uh, we're doing that every single day. And we appreciate. Thank you very much to all of our callers on this Super Bowl Sunday. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, however many of you ended up watching this. But <laughs> thanks again. Uh, we'll be back here next Sunday. And of course, don't forget Arlo's lecture. Check our website for info on that. Um, 
reruns of this show play every Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, on this channel. Uh, don't know how many weeks behind the reruns run, but uh, so if you ever if you missed one, you can catch us here Tuesday afternoons at 4.30 as well. Thank you to our stalwart crew. Thanks to Arlo for bringing us the uh, little uh, Hindu rattle <laughs> and stuff. And... Um, this is great. Um, Woo! Uh, so, uh, yes, we we'll have s- applause at the end of the show. That's right. So we'll see you next time. And uh, once again, theists, remember, we, we don't, don't hate you. you. We just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Appreciate it. Mm. Take care. And here goes our love rings. Right.